Hey, what's up, everyone? Mark Price here at devsbooks.com. And today, we're going to talk about React props or props for a component. And props is short for properties. Okay, props, there's two very important things with React that you will use all the time. We haven't even talked about it once, okay? It's called props, and the other one's called state. Okay, state is like the current state of a component, okay? Like a status, okay? I am sick, I am hungry, that's a state of Mark Price, okay? Sick of recording all these videos, just kidding. Uh, so that's a state, whereas properties are attributes that are read-only. So for instance, uh, you know, I have hazel eyes, you know, or, you know, I have this skin complexion, okay? These are things that really aren't changing. They're read-only. So uh, an entity or a component has things that are changeable, which is state, and things that are not changeable, uh, which are properties, which we call props, okay? And what you do is your props come down from upper components down into lower components. They never create themselves. They always come up from above. And so if you can imagine, since we're here in our main app, and this is where we download the data for our products, we probably need to pass in data into our props. But before we create a list of, uh, of products, um, we want to actually just demonstrate how to use a prop. So to use a prop and pass it down to a inner component, all we have to do, it's actually not too bad at all, all we have to do is say, or put the prop in here, so price. And for right now, we're just going to we're just going to use actual um, uh, literal strings here. So, you know, I might say 423, and the title, you know, I might say is, um, you know, cool toy gun, and then the image URL. Let's just go find an image from the internet. Um, Let's just type in uh, squirt gun images. You know, let's uh, let's do this super soaker. There we go. I'm just gonna copy this URL just for fun. <clears throat> all right, and we're gonna paste it right in here. Image URL. So all you have to do uh, in order to work with props is literally pass them in as attributes of an HTML element. And, and you may have done this with other HTML elements before, like an image has a source attribute, okay? We're creating our own attributes here, but in React, they're called props. And we send it down to the component itself. So the price, the title, image URL, and these key names are very important because they're the exact key names that you'll access inside of your component. So to actually access those props, all we need to do is go into our product.js and use them. So they're already here. Even if we didn't save them anywhere, they're already here because the, the parent component gave it down to the child. So this uh, image class name, let's give it a source. And it's going to be equal to this.props.imageurl. <clears throat> so these curly braces uh, is a special syntax, okay? It allows you to insert JavaScript in between them. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're inserting JavaScript, this.props.imageurl. Now, remember, you, you don't see props anywhere, but they're there. They're invisible, uh, because, uh, but they were passed down from the parent. So we say this.props, meaning the props of this product, dot image URL. And again, it's the one that we just passed in in our app.js, this image URL. And the key name is important. If you use the wrong key name, it will not find it. OK, so that's the image source. Um, what, what else do we need? Well, we need a title. So this would be. And you can use the props uh, or the special syntax inside of the element itself or uh, even here in the text, okay? And so for the title, this.props.title, that's what we named it. And for the price, this.props.price. Now what I would expect to see when I press save on here, I would expect that the uh, price, where is it? There we go. I don't, I'm not even using this. Get out of here. The price is 423. Uh, it says cool toy gun and the image URL is here. And so if you've been following along, you'll notice that it immediately worked. What? Now that's really cool. So can you kind of see how we could start passing data down for a list of products? Okay, we would, we would download them and then we would create three of these products. Okay, maybe some type of for loop. We'll talk about that in a minute. We'd create three of these products here 
and then just display whatever information needs to be displayed. Uh, we have some problems though. Uh, the UI is off. And so this is what I like to do. This is my workflow. Create the, create the component and then pass down the needed props with fake data. Okay, an image URL, put fake data in there so you can quickly get the UI in place before you move on. And clearly we need to do that. Our, our image is too big. Um, and so I just wanna, I wanna clean some things up before we move forward. So let's look at our product. Okay, so first things first is we're using the bootstrap card, but we probably need to create our own CSS class uh, for this called product. And then what we can do is in our product.css, we say dot product. And what do we want to do? Well, of course, that image was really big, right? It, it actually made the whole card. I'll show you again. It made the whole card stretch out uh, and not just the image. And so we want to set a max width uh, on our card. So what we're going to do is, well, we're just going to set a fixed width. I mean, we're going to say width is going to be equal to 20 REM. Okay, and this is just a size that I tested that I felt looked really nice. And if we go back, okay, much better, right? It's 20, but of course, now the gun is stretched, which is also a problem. So we need to do some more. Let's grab that image and make adjustments. Okay, and what we're going to do is just give it a max height of 20 REM as well. Let's just play around with it, see how it looks. Uh, it's a little bit squashed, squashed still product image let's make sure that I actually have this set up correctly so we have the product and then the image inside of it yeah let's make it a little bit smaller just because we can we'll play around with this later um, we could write some nice elegant code to to move things around but we're just this isn't so much about the UI or the CSS as it is about just showing you how to do it and that's, I'm okay with this for now. Um, we probably want to force this to be aspect ratio, but again, I'm not wor overly worried about that. That's not the point uh, of this right here, um, but you can do that. So I do want to get make some more uh, padding here. I don't like the fact that it's all the way up here. And I don't think that, what I, I don't think that this is something I should do from the product itself. I think if I want padding from the upper thing, it should be handled from the, uh, the app. So let's look at the app.js here and so we got this app main, and I think this is where we need to put the padding. So if I go into the uh, app main.css, all right, let's go, where is it? App main, what I want to do is to add some padding. Let's say 35 pixels. And let's go let's take a look at it, and that's looking good. Um, I also, one other thing I also noticed is um, we're kind of violating a rule of, of the Bootstrap 4, at least. We don't have a container in here. Uh, so let's go ahead and put one of those in as well, too. And again, this should be handled at, at our app level, not at our product level. And so app main, um, let's see where's a good place to put it. We don't want to put it on the header, so let's put the container here. So we're going to say container space app main. And now we should be nice and far away from the edge of the screen. There we go. And that's looking good. It's coming together. So there's our there's our product. It's it's fine. Add to wish list. But this is really cool, right? And if you want to see something uh, fun, I, I mean, you probably did this already. We can just copy this, paste, and paste. And the website, if it keeps disappearing on me, is instantly updated. See? Which I think is really cool. Now, we got a problem here as well, is these aren't uh, really in a row. Okay? So let's, let's get back to Bootstrap here and make a row uh, for our products here. And so... I think it makes sense inside of here to have a div. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna say class name equals row. And let's put the products in here. Okay. Now, um, we'll, we'll do this later, but we'll, we'll have to probably change this later, but class name equals probably call dash, dash sm dash four. Let's make it, make them uh, take equal space on the screen. You know, these like f uh, three feature products. We know Bootstrap Grid has uh, has a maximum of 12, okay, in the columns. So we're gonna paste that here, paste that here, and paste that here. And what we should see is everything lining up beautifully in our app. Oh yeah, that's coming together real nice. Awesome, super awesome, okay. and. 
you know, we probably should put space in between, uh, in between these guys here, um, just to make it look a little bit nicer. I think so. Well, we can leave that off for now because we have, we're gonna have to make changes. Um, uh, we're not gonna leave these in here like this. So, so I think there's a better way to handle that, but we've made some good progress, okay? We've got a product showing on the screen. We've tested it out, the UI is fine. Uh, we could of course play with it a little more, but um, I think we're good for now. Yeah, I think we're, we're good. So let's go ahead and call this video done. And what we wanna do next is actually get our data from that we already have from the server, from the API, and just shove it in here, and it's not that hard to do. So let's go ahead and do that now. Mark Price at devslopes.com moving forward. <laughs>